This is KGW News at Sunrise. Uh, I gotta find housing and all this stuff because I don't think we'll have a place to stay for a while. But I imagine it'll probably be a month or more, I imagine. I mean, look at the size of the fire. Hey, he's one of several people looking for a place to live this morning after an apartment complex fire in Vancouver. What we know about how this fire started coming up in one of our top local stories. And Newburgh school board leaders have appointed an interim superintendent just as parents called for the resignation of the current superintendent. Our Devin Haskins will be breaking down the details coming up in just a few minutes. Plus. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Have you guys seen this video before? What? Yeah, crazy moment caught on camera. Someone <laughs> stealing a package off that porch, basically as the FedEx driver puts it on the ground. Yeah, the uh, drop off what? and then the takeoff all in the same moment. We'll have more on this coming up for you a little bit later here in the five o'clock hour. Can you imagine what that no, FedEx driver that was thinking? Like, what What are you doing? It looks to me like <laughs> he thought. He, and what is he supposed to do about it? Too? Probably, he can't, he probably can't do it. It all happened so yeah. fast, but it yeah. looked to me like he thought maybe that person lived there. Like, oh, oh yeah. whoa. Wait, like, where are you going? Just, it happened exactly. in I know. I, yeah, I'm totally in agreement there. And, and new uh, definition to the word brazen, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, Holy cow. Yeah, we will have more on that coming up again later this hour. But first, we want to lead off the 5 o'clock hour with Chris's forecast. And it looks glorious. Let's get you out the door with a very pretty sunrise here from our Wells Fargo Sky Camera. We are about 25 minutes away from, less than 25 minutes away from sunrise now at this point. We do have some clouds banking up the Cascades, but they are not as thick, not as widespread as they were yesterday as they were moving in during our sunrise show. It's 51 last check at PDX. It's 42 in Hillsborough. So in some cases, in a lot of cases, we're a little cooler this morning than we were yesterday at this time. Big picture across the region, upper 40s and low 50s across eastern Oregon. Pendleton 51, mid 40s in Newport right now in Astoria, checking in with 54 degrees. The plan for today, partly cloudy conditions at the airport right now. We go mostly sunny as we roll through our lunch hour, mid 60s at lunchtime, and we finish off the day sunny and 76. How's that? All right, let's get you out the door with a live look at the roads and I start off with the traffic map. I want to take you down to Lynn County, uh, just south of the Sio area. There's a crash on Highway 226. Uh, ODOT reporting the road is still open. Uh, however, there are still emergency responders there, so be on the lookout for them. I-5 out of Clark County rolling right along over the Interstate Bridge. Banfield looks good right now and so too does the sunset at the Sylvan Hills. So far locally, no crashes, no unexpected delays. Okay, looking good out there. Thank you, Chris. Now at five, officials are working to figure out what caused an apartment fire that left more than a dozen people without a home. It happened last night in the Hazeldell neighborhood of Vancouver. KGW's Alma McCarty brings us the details. Luckily, no one was injured in the fire that burned through several of the Erica Village apartments Tuesday evening. Crews spent an hour working to get the flames under control. Here's a look at the aftermath off Northeast 105th Street. According to the battalion chief with Clark County Fire District 6, the fire started on the second floor. We've heard from some neighbors. They believe it started on a back porch. From there, the fire spread up to the attic and then through the roof. Wind was a factor, making it more difficult for firefighters to battle the flames. Although the fire didn't spread to all the apartments, firefighters say everyone living here had to relocate for the time being due to water damage and no power. That impacts 18 apartments. The fire didn't make it into mine, but it's next to the unit that had fire. So I'm just hoping to get my cat out of there and hopefully it's OK. And, uh, you know, uh, I got to find housing and all this stuff because okay. I don't think we'll have a place to stay for a while. But I imagine it'll probably be a month or more. I imagine. I mean, look at the size of the fire. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Here's a look at some other local headlines we're following this morning. Tualta Valley Fire and Rescue says seven units were impacted by this fire at a Tigard apartment complex. It happened just after one o'clock this morning, so just a few hours ago on Southwest Durham Road and 108th Avenue. The fire is out now. Still no word though on what caused it. We do know that no one was hurt and that the Red Cross has stepped in at this point to help people who have been displaced. And a judge has set bail at $200,000 for the man charged with stealing a semi-truck tractor and leading police on a chase from Portland to Vancouver. 39-year-old Jesus Meza Sanchez made his first court appearance yesterday. He's accused of driving a truck into two sheriff's vehicles Monday morning, then leading authorities on a chase across the Columbia, temporarily shutting down I-205 in Vancouver. Meza Sanchez is due back in court later this month. 
A judge will hear arguments today over whether or not the man accused of firing shots at more than a dozen traffic cameras around the Portland area should stay in jail before his trial. On Monday, Portland police arrested 28-year-old Chase Gerjalva. He's accused of damaging 17 traffic cameras and causing more than $500,000 in damage across the area. This comes after Gerjalva racked up four speeding tickets in less than three months' time, three of those tickets from the very same intersection. And that's a look at some of this morning's local headlines. There is now an interim superintendent overseeing the Newburgh School District. The move comes after the school board learned last night that the current superintendent would be taking a two month leave. Devin Haskins is covering this story for us live this morning in Newburgh. Devin, what's the latest? Yeah, so the uh, the school board hopes that the uh, new interim school district uh, superintendent can help solve some of the biggest issues facing the district, which is now nearly four million dollars in debt. The board last night appointed a familiar face, former Newburgh superintendent Dr. Paula Radich on an interim basis. The board learned about the current superintendent Stephen Phillips decision to take leave for two months just the day before the meeting. Parents had been calling for his resignation, putting much of the blame for the budget crisis on him. And that budget crisis will be one of the biggest issues Radich will be trying to figure out when she takes over. It was just last month the district learned it was just under $4 million in debt. And at last night's meeting, school board members also said layoffs will be necessary and said they had already notified the teachers union. Board members discussed cutting 60 full time positions, though that number has not been finalized. I am sorry to those who will be losing their jobs. Um, this was not your fault. I didn't want it, people to lose their jobs. Many of you know this has impacted us already, my family. And I don't wish that upon anybody else. <laughs> we hear your voice, and we. Re I really hope that we can be patient with each other and work towards unity and harmony in the community of Newburgh. The uh, interim superintendent will take over starting at noon today, and she has already notified board members that she will do the job for free. Something I think they're uh, they're pretty excited about. Back to you. Okay, Devin Haskins reporting from uh, from Newburgh for us this morning. Thank you, Devin. Meanwhile, the Portland Public School Board adopted next year's budget in its meeting last night with $30 million in cuts. That includes roughly 250 positions. This comes after the board made a major budget amendment last month, moving $1.8 million from the district's reserve fund back into its racial equity and social justice contract budget. Without that amendment, budget cuts would have threatened after school programs. Salem-Kaiser School Board also adopted a budget for next year with a 6 to 1 vote. It includes roughly $70 million in proposed cuts, leading to the loss of about 400 positions. The district says it's already notified the educators and other staff members impacted by these cuts. We have asked this question once already this morning and we are asking it again. Are you in the market? for a streetcar because <laughs> now is the time to get your very own Portland streetcar. Yeah, you heard it right. Peabot has put a used streetcar up for auction on the website govdeals.com. So the prototype model was built in 2012. It's got just over 68,000 miles on it, features low floor entry, air conditioning, and spacious seating for the family. Yeah, sound like a car salesman. <laughs> the auction closes June 25th, by the way, and right now the highest bid is $700 $25. There are a couple catches though. The drive system not working and the auctioneer says it'll cost an estimated 50 grand to haul it. So at least $50,725 right now. Yeah, if that's they were the costs on that are going to be what? <laughs> Shouldn't that be the headline? Hey, do you have an extra $50,000? Yeah, you like right. To spend? Laying around. Because, that's because exactly they will just give this to you. Yeah. But really, they just want to get rid of it, right? Oh, for and, sure. And they don't have another. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. It's like a monument. At How this are those? Point. It's a pretty cool looking one. How are the windows? Are they are they energy efficient and all that? I don't know. The questions. There? Yeah. Questions to ask. Good Chris. You want to be a car up. salesman instead of a weatherman. I can tell. <laughs> That's your passion. A train car salesman. All right, let's a street car salesman. Let's get you out the door right now. And here's a pretty look of Mount Jefferson from uh, Timberline. Check out the cloud deck down below working its way into the Cascades this morning. It's not as thick. It's not as widespread as it was yesterday, but it is pretty neat to watch that as it is. Well, look at the glow. Look at this. It's literally the glow is coming down the mountain as we speak with the sun uh, illuminating the tippy top of Mount Hood there. And this is the live look from Oregon's Veterans Home in the Dalles. It was breezy in the Dalles yesterday, by the way. The Dalles sustained a wind gust of 
44 miles an hour. From that to the Oregon coast, it's a little moody right here from uh, Lincoln City, right as we check out Cascade Head off in the distance. A little bit of fog just kind of hanging over the water, otherwise a pretty day there. The beach will turn out mostly sunny today, but it will be breezy along the Oregon coast. North northwest winds at 15 to 25 sustained with some higher gusts. Here's a look at future cast with a wind gust forecast. And again, there you can see that the arrow is pointing in the direction uh, that the wind is, is going right north to northwest 26 31 at Newport. So again, gusty there. Breezy through the East Gorge as well, but not as breezy as yesterday. I mentioned the Dallas had a 44 mile an hour wind gust. Today you'll be on the order of about 30 to 35 right with the higher the higher gusts. Cascade locks gets to 73 Hood River 76 as we hop over to Central Oregon should be a gorgeous day for you folks as well. Mostly sunny and warm, maybe a, a smidge cooler than yesterday, but still looking pretty good 80 in Bend this afternoon. Up and down the I-5 quarter, most of us right around 65 or so at lunchtime and then we finish off the day. 75, maybe 76 here in town, hopping across the eastern part of the state, upper 70s to low 80s should do it for you folks. I want to go out a little wider as you know, we're, we're at Wednesday, right? So I wanted to start kind of helping you make some plans for your weekend. And that is what I'm watching swirling out in the Gulf of Alaska. That cold low pressure here is going to drift south and eastward as we go towards Friday, Saturday and Sunday and bring us clouds, cooler temperatures and a chance for some showers. This is Friday. The clouds rolling in Saturday. That system gets a little closer. We're kind of on the southern periphery of it, but close enough to get clipped by showers on Saturday and possibly even Father's Day Sunday. So I just want to let you know about that as you're making your plans for this weekend. A lot going on, of course, We've got Flag Day on Friday, uh, Saturday, a lot of Juneteenth celebrations ongoing on Saturday and Father's Day Sunday. Saturday looks like the wetter of the two days at this point with cool daytime highs in the upper 60s. We start to come out of it early next week. Drew, back to you. All right, Chris, let's talk.